Okay, so a major difference between what we currently have and Don't Starve is the perspective. So if you click on the main camera, you see the preview down here, you can see the skybox, you can see the horizon. You can never, ever see the horizon and Don't Starve. The camera is actually above the ground and pointing down. Right now, our camera is kind of pointing parallel. Its, its path is parallel to the ground. So what you want to do is you want to raise the camera up and rotate it down towards the ground. So that's the first thing you want to do. But the problem with that is then all these images will look slanted because they're 2D images. And now since you're no longer looking at them straight on and you're pointing down, they're not going to look right. So how do games like Don't Starve do this? Well, even though I'm not part of that development team, there are very easy tricks to do this. And it's been done in games like um, like one of the Zelda games for the 3DS. And what you do is actually you, you take the characters and rather than have them being upright on the environment, you actually rotate them so that they're facing the camera. It may sound crazy, but it looks right. So first of all, we need this ground to be bigger. I'm not sure how large it was in the last one. I did some testing, but let's make it bigger. Let's make it like 40X and 40Z. So it's really huge. We'll take this. And again, it doesn't matter the exact amount. All depends how big you want the objects on the screen to be. But we'll raise this up to maybe... Let's see how six looks. And a lot of this isn't absolute. A lot of this is what looks right to you. So let's put this at six even. So now what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to rotate it. How much? Well, let's do 45 degrees and see how that looks. Now, since we want to rotate it down towards the ground, that means we're rotating it on the X axis. It's pivoting around the X. OK, so for uh, not scale, excuse me, for rotation. See how it's pointing down at the ground now? Let's run that. So the size is about right, but as we said, the characters look wrong because now they're obviously 2D images. Although, interestingly enough, this one doesn't look that off, probably because of the odd shape. So what do we do? Well, as I said, we rotate them. Now, if you've got like hundreds and hundreds of images and you don't, have to, you don't want to have to rotate all of them, you've got two things you can do. You can either manually rotate them as we said or what you can do is you can create a script that all it does is rotate the image and then apply that script to the various objects which is easy because you could just like select a whole bunch of objects drag and drop the script over here and they'll rotate however in our case we only have a few so let's click on abigail now since the camera rotated 45 degrees that means she needs to rotate 45 degrees this is going to cause a couple issues. A, the light is attached to her, or should I say it's a child. So that means the light is going to cast forward now rather than straight down. So that's an easy enough fix. That one we can minus out the rotation. We'll put it at, oops, sorry. I meant to click on the light. We'll bring that to 45. So as you can see, the light is pointing straight down now. But we're going to have to move it forward. Because it won't be under her. And now Abigail herself needs to be moved down a bit. And let's see how that looks. This looks not quite right, but it's good enough for this, for the demo. To me, it looks a little bit brighter in the front here than the back, but that might just be uh, an optical illusion. So actually, let's also make this wider because we could still see the corners. So we'll bring this out to 50. But overall, she looked right. So now we'll do the same thing with the fire. Rotate the fire 45 degrees. Oops, sorry. You want to grab the campfire itself. Well, yeah, we'll do the campfire. 
because when you rotate the parent, the children rotate as well. Again, we'll fix the spotlight. We'll take out that 45 degrees. Move the spotlight forward. Now, if I recall correctly, Abigail and the fire pit actually had two different uh, control points. That's why she had to move down, but the fire pit really doesn't need to. The rock will also rotate 45 degrees. It doesn't have a light. And just like that, there you go. So it's not perfect. I think that this looks a little bit distorted, but again, it might just because there's not a whole lot of, um, there's a couple of things going on. A, this one has this fake distance that I drew in, whereas she's flat. So that might be part of what's doing it. Also, there's not really a whole lot of other reference here. But generally speaking, it's looking much closer to being right. If you want, you could take the light, move it back a little bit. But as you can see, this definitely looks better than what we first looked like because the light looked like it was cutting off behind it. Okay. I think that should about do it for this one. Like I said, it really wasn't meant to be a long tutorial. This was really just meant to get the perspective. So now you no longer see the horizon. And just in case you want to make sure that this didn't break Abigail, just go ahead and click the W. And you, as you can see, she is still moving her along just fine. She's not like clipping into the ground or anything like that. And actually, let's go ahead and run that again. But we'll change the we'll, we'll open the um, scene so we can see it from this direction. So as you can see, she's not clipping into the ground or anything. It's working just fine. Okay, so I think that should about do this. Like I said, this was just a quick one to address the angle issue. Uh, that's been taken care of now. And I think in the next one, we'll probably look at the wormholes. So that should do it for this one.